Hi, you remember the solar analytics monitoring system that failed? Uh, it was the SuperCap. This is for monitoring my home uh, solar uh, system, uh, but multiple solar power systems at home. And uh, it was one of these caps, which we've removed. It was one of these super caps here, this Nest cap, that actually uh, leaked. Uh, the magic uh, fluid escaped. And yeah, it, um, it took out quite a few uh, components, that diode -y. Poor little diode -y there. It uh, just absolutely burnt that board right through. And that absolutely fascinating resistor there, that just melted and reflow soldered itself in the other direction. Absolutely fantastic. So anyway, and an update on this, Solar Analytics did actually get back to me uh, ab about this, and they have not seen this problem, uh, this, you know, a failed cap uh, like this, causing this damage in over 70,000 units installed. And if you watch my original video, which I didn't spot in that video, this uh, balance resistor here, R14, that was actually missing when I took it apart. So if you have a missing balance resistor across two series super caps like this, this one I actually uh, desoldered, um, but this one was actually missing. And it seems to have originally been there because if we have a look, you can see here the solder joint like that, it looks like it's had the physical resistor was in there at one point. Otherwise it probably wouldn't have lasted like the six years I've had it installed, something like that. Um, so yeah, and it, it looks like, yes, yeah, some of the uh, gunk has accumulated under the resistor which used to be there. So maybe it just, it fell out on the trip here because I just tossed it in the car and maybe it just, it fell off on the trip. So losing that uh, balance resistor there might have eventually caused the caps to fail. But anyway, it, it doesn't matter. We had a failed super cap. But uh, thank you very much, Solar Analytics. They have sent a new one. Um, that I have started to take apart. It's actually got two uh, screws in it uh, as opposed to the other one. Now this is the new uh, 4G bottle. By new I mean like 2018. Mine's that old that uh, yeah I think this came out in 2018. So yeah my old one was a 3G one which apparently they're going to turn off 3G here in Australia like within the next couple of years. So it would have just died anyway. <laughs> so this is the new uh, 4G uh, one. So yeah I've got to uh, set it up of course after it's uh, installed for my system, got to register it, all that sort of stuff. But uh, there you go. The good thing about this is that it is now, there's the uh, three uh, phase input. I've only got single phase at home, so uh, you just tie them all together. The good thing about this one is that it is actually either three phase or six channel like this. So you can actually have six channels, which is very handy because I've just got my new heat pump um, heater installed. So the, yeah, I, the old one only had three uh, channels and I would have been limited by that. So I can have multiple uh, power circuits for the house. I could have like aircon as a separate one, uh, heat pump as a separate one, and then of course you've got one uh, for the solar, um, the, the output of the uh, solar um, as well. In fact, I'll show you the here is the installation instructions for this thing, the single phase. They also give you a sheet for uh, three phase as well, but you can see. That, uh, yeah, so we've got the six channels here. They've got two uh, common grounds. And uh, they show an example over here for hot water. So I had gas hot water before, just switched to heat pump. So that's fantastic. So we can actually uh, feed that in. So I can monitor that at the moment. I've actually got an energy monitor plugged into that thing. And I'm going out there and recording it daily. And this is for a, a video I'm about to uh, shoot. And I'm recording it in a spreadsheet. And then I'm just getting data. This will allow me to like just continuously monitor the hot water, which is fantastic. Um, so I'll be able to get like daily uh, changes over that, over the different seasons and everything. So I won't have to do it manually because I'm, you know, it's a bit of a pain to go out there and just record. I'm recording all the temperature, water temperatures. I'm recording the, you know, the weather and, and I'm recording everything. Anyway, so yeah, multiple loads. And then you've got the inverter. I've actually got two inverters so I've actually I've done a video on this so I have to link that in how I actually um, I came a gutter in this when they originally uh, installed my second end phase solar system it was installed incorrectly in regards to the solar analytics system which didn't know one of them existed and it was getting I was getting negative power and all sorts of things so anyway I've actually got to feed uh, both uh, systems through there but that's how um, you install this thing so my existing wiring I think should be uh, compatible to actually just plug, because I've still got it wired up, I should just be able to plug that uh, straight back in 
and Bob's your uncle, so this is the KR63K. So let's open this up and have a look, because a few people wanted to know, um, does it have a the series super caps? Which some people say is, you know, not great design practice, but they did actually count that and take that into account with the balance resistors and everything and argue in the comments down below, but they say, I've already been told that this one, spoiler alert, only has the one super cap and there's a DC to DC uh, converter in there because they've probably got like different design requirements for the 3G module versus the 4G module and which it has to power and all that uh, sort of stuff. The super cap's only in there to uh, give it like a last gasp you know, if it senses that the power fails, it gives them just a last gap, gasp thing to like shut it down properly so it doesn't actually corrupt the data. It can report back that it's failed or something. Like one last, you know, 4G burst back uh, home reporting that, yeah, power's failed or something like that. Sometimes you have to get a knife in there instead of a spudger, but there you go. We're in. That came off much nicer than the old one. And, oh! No, that looks like two super caps. They told me the new one. Anyway, they're mixed red and green. Uh, red goes faster, transmits faster. Everyone knows that. Um, no, there's two super caps again. Oh, I was oh I, I was told by the designer that there's only one super cap, so I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, basically the same uh, construction as before by the looks of it. But uh, let's let's get it out. Although, granted, these caps might be in parallel. We don't know. Can't, I guess we can't just assume that they're... Oh, they've still got, the, uh, still got the tape on there. Still got the Mylar tape. What were they using that for? I don't see a reason to have the Mylar tape on there. It's not like they can formally coded anything or did anything like that. So, hey, not sure what the deal is. Anyway, I'm not going to get zapped on this one, I hope. <laughs> I don't know, when was the last time it got powered up? <laughs> you remember I got zapped on the last one? I could have tested it at the factory. Nah, I'm getting zippity doo da voltage on that. On both of those uh, DC rectifier, mains rectified filter caps there. So it's hunky-dory. And yeah, it's got exactly the same arrangement board card edge connector as before. So that's really groovy. I have a quick look. At the new 4G processor board here, turn upside down, don't want all the electrons to fall out, and doesn't my head fit nicely in there? We've got two ADE7880 uh, power monitoring chips now. Not much else, there's a little watch crystal there, it's soldered down. Uh, not much else, there's a big power device missing there. I wonder why, they got a link in there, and that's missing, I don't know. Anyway, it does have a uh, micro USB on it, but that would be for programming. High pot B, would that be a uh, high pot test on the digital board? That doesn't make sense. It uses the same uh, set, well, at least the same brand uh, Centurion processor that we uh, saw before, which has all the uh, GSM stuff built in, but it'd be an upgraded model for 4G, I guess, or whatnot. But uh, yeah, there you go. So it's a rather curious uh, choice for the processor, but you want an all-in-one thing that does all the GSM stuff for you and you want it to be like you know certified and all the rest of it so that's that now let's have a look at our what watches again jk uh, consulting who designed it oh, and this is 2016 wow <laughs> what is the what's the what's the original date on mine 2015 <laughs> september 2015 may 2016 wow so i was i was like six months away from getting like the 4g model when i got mine <laughs> that's a near identical it's not quite identical but it's near identical isn't it it's near it's got the two super cap it's a very similar arrangement even the diodes in the same place that resistor those two caps uh this is this is different this is different here. The main side looks absolutely identical. Ah, it's got an extra uh, TVS um, up there. It's got two TVSs instead of uh, there for surge protection. So it's got two instead of one. So that's a bit extra. But apart from that, um, yeah, looks looks the same. Flip it over. Wow, yeah, they really haven't changed that. It's near identical layout. Now, somebody mentioned that uh, they were concerned with the isolation in here and yeah, I, I would have, if I was designing this, if I was laying it out, I certainly would have put an isolation slot because these are the three phases here. 
coming in. So I certainly would have would have put isolation slots between there. And uh, but you know if you work out the uh, clearance, technically it's probably enough. And over here it's on the low vo lower voltage um, side of things. So this is the high voltage side. But yeah, I I probably would have put isolation slots in there. But they've had no issues whatsoever. So they've got more MELF resistors here. Oh, more MELF is better. Uh, all the MELF fanboys. I'm a MELF fanboy. And uh, yep, and uh, our big our big resistor. A big R24 is gone, and we've got a, like an extra diode -y there, and um, that's about it. Oh no, that one, that chip, the, the Q1 there, has been swapped to the top side now. So that was the R, and the big resistors on the top side now. I missed it. Okay, right. And yes, once again, those two super caps, they're in series. So uh, yeah, that's, and we've got the two balance resistors there across. Okay, I was told that it was reduced to one, but I don't know. Maybe they've sent me an old stock and it is actually re redesigned again. I don't know. But anyway, as I said, uh, they mine was the first failure they've seen like that in 70,000 installed units. So, yeah, um, <laughs> you know, something happened to mine. Of course it did. Bloody Murphy. Actually, the date of this being eight months older than this is just a an update on the power board, really. I mean, it's got nothing to do with the, like, you can change the processor board. So that's what changes between uh, 4G, uh, between the 3G and the new 4G one. So, yeah, I guess they just haven't changed that uh, power supply for ages. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Feb 2020 there. I've got a, a pretty new build there. That's not, that's not too shabby. So anyway, there you go. Thank you, Solar Analytics. I'm going to put that back together and um, I probably won't bother doing a video installing it. There's nothing to see really, unless you really want it. Leave it in the comments down below, but uh, yeah. Uh, so we'll reassemble that and well, we'll see how long the two um, the series <laughs> series caps last again because <laughs> there are a couple of people who went oh of course they failed series caps I hate series caps and uh, you know it, it it is a thing in the industry it's a you know it's, sometimes it's a trade off that you uh, make yeah but um the, the designer specifically said that um there was a model with only one super cap and like a boost converter or something so I don't know yeah uh, maybe they've uh, you know I don't know maybe I've got some new old stock or something. There you go. Little trick to that. I'll put that back together. We'll slide those in there. They're the din, din rail, um, like little clamp things, whatever you call them. So, yeah, no worries. Just wanted to do a. Well, it wasn't quick, was it? I waffled on. Anyway, that's a tear down of the new Solar Analytics 4G KR63. Thoughts and comments down below should get me up and back up and running um, in terms of monitoring stuff. And I can new, yes, I should be able to monitor my new heat pump. Fantastic. Anyway, I've got that heat pump video coming shortly. Catch you next time.